Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. A judge directs a jury to find pro-life journalists guilty of journalism. Why doesn't the First Amendment protect their rights? Today we have attorney Matt Barber with Legal Analysis. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. On today's show, we have live in-studio expert analysis from our attorney, Matt Barber, with Christian Civil Rights Watch. He will explain why a pro-abortion judge with ties to Planned Parenthood in California has directed a jury, gave them no discretion, but ordered the jury to find pro-lifers guilty of journalism. Welcome to the program, Matt Barber with Christian Civil Rights Watch. Uh, Matt, you have been uh, loosely affiliated with this case because you used to work as the Assistant Dean of Liberty University School of Law. This morning you did another interview with Matt Staver who was representing Sandra Merritt and also uh, friends of David Delayden, right? Correct. Who were found, Christian pro-life journalists found guilty. Tell us what happened. Yeah, and, and as you know, I was Vice President of Liberty Council Action and a co-host Faith and Freedom with Matt Staver. We talked about it, this horrific decision today on uh, faith and freedom and, and uh, needless to say, the decision is gonna be appealed and it's ripe for appeal and I think it's a slam dunk for appeal, frankly. Uh, now, what, what occurred here is this judge, Oric, who has known uh, direct ties to Planned Parenthood, who is a huge Planned Parenthood supporter, uh, Liberty Council, who's representing, as you mentioned, Sandra Merritt, moved for him to recuse himself. He refused to do so, and now we see why. This was, I believe, uh, that the uh, the case was uh, stacked all along. He would not allow direct evidence that would have shown that the two ele elements necessary for, for uh, Delayden and Merritt to be found guilty and liable here, uh, he did everything he could to circumvent those elements. And that is, uh, first of all, for uh, them to engage in the recording that they did. They're one Reminder of the- Reminder yeah. audience of what happened. The, yeah. For those who aren't following the story. The Center for Medical Progress is a journalism organization, an uh, investigative pro-life journalist uh, organization that does undercover investigations to reveal the criminal activities of Planned Parenthood. And at the, to the heart of this is uh, irrefutably uh, Planned Parenthood engaging in the criminal sell and profiteering of baby body parts. Babies that are, that they're, some of them believe to be even born alive. Uh, they're, they're incentivized to keep them intact, to sell full intact baby bodies and their organs uh, for, for scientific study and, 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 and whatever to a number of potential uh, clients, and, and this is illegal. Well, we have smoking gun evidence based on these videos. Now, there there are two elements. So David Delighton and Sandra Merritt were the journalists. <coughs> journalists. Who, who caught them on tape admitting these admitting crimes. Admitting these crimes. We published the, the videos, and then the journalists got in trouble. Overwhelming evidence, and, and that's right. What they did is they've now politicized the judicial system. They weaponized it to use it against the First Amendment, against journalism. One of the major networks, I think it was ABC, actually did, uh, back in the 90s, a, a very similar investigative report uh, that was undercover along the same lines. Of course, they didn't get in trouble. No. Uh, but this is a shot over the bow of all pro-lifers and, and all investigative journalists. The problem is this this decision now, uh, the, the, uh, even the LA Times came down against this because it will, it will have such a chilling effect on journalism and on investigative journalism. So they claimed that, that, that by not letting them know they were recording, it violated the uh, the the uh, the standards there in California that both parties have to be aware that they are they are being recorded. They they have one one party consent, two party consent, three party consent. Uh, different states in California, it's a two party consent, meaning that the party being recorded has to consent unless one those doing the recording have a reasonable belief that those who whom they are recording are engaging in criminal activity. 
caught on camera wow. admitting criminal activity. Yeah. And two, uh, it, it's also um, exculpatory if they are if it is done if it is not confidential or expected or thought to be confidential by those being recorded. Well, there are multiple videos with them in in diners, in elevators, with other people standing They're in the, in in the elevators. They're in public places, in, in going into a conference where they purchased tickets. They were not trespassing. They were invited guests, ticket purchasers, and attendees of these conferences. Right. And, and so the judge was very careful to not allow video showing the actual criminality of Planned Parenthood because that would have covered one of the elements, exonerating uh, Merritt and, and uh, DeLayden. Yep. And two, we have admissions from those being recorded, first of all, clearly in a public area, clearly with people in booths behind them in restaurants and elevators. And, and Sandra Merritt and David DeLayden had the foresight to even say, hey, should we... Do, would you rather talk somewhere more privately or, or is this okay? Every, in every instance, oh no, this is fine. It, so they're consenting, yeah. saying, but we're, no, we're in public. We're, this is not confidential. So they're admitting, well, none of that evidence the judge would allow uh, because the fix was in. Yeah. And, and, and beyond that, as, as you already mentioned, the jury, why do we even have a jury? Why was the jury even there? The judge had already made his decision and he issues his two hours, he reads the jury orders. And, ish, and basically instructs them to find them guilty. I can't believe this. Uh, in America, <clears throat> where we have in the Constitution, it says uh, everyone's entitled to a trial by their peers, not by a judge, uh, but now we have a judge instructing the an jury. An activist judge. An activist judge with Planned Parenthood instructing the jury to find them guilty. And the only thing the jury had discretion over was, should you find them $1 or $870,000? And the jury took the max. Let's take a short break. When we come back, Matt Barber will explain the elements of the First Amendment that were ignored in this case. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign an important online petition. Today, I wanna to invite you to sign a critical petition to defend innocent babies and to end abortion in America. On this show, we like to pray and petition God, but we also need you to take action today by petitioning Congress to stop the taxpayer-funded child killing, especially by defunding Planned Parenthood, America's number one abortion provider. Why are your taxes paying to murder innocent children in the womb? Well, if Congress would simply define personhood as life beginning at conception, we can reverse Roe versus Wade. Please join me today by signing this important petition to Congress. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign your petition today. Sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. I'm Dr. Chaps. You know, some people are worried that we're losing our country, but they ask, how can we take a stand? We have produced now these two effective resources for you, a DVD video series and a book. Yours for a suggested donation of just $50, and we will offer you four videos on this disc to teach you how to become an effective Christian activist. For example, how did I send five million petitions to Congress? How did we organize and change bad laws or policies in 13 states? How did I run and win a seat in the Colorado legislature? We will also offer you this 30-day prayer manual, How to Liberate the World in 30 Days. They're both yours for a suggested donation of just $50. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org, or write to the address on your screen, or better yet, pick up the phone and call us at 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. You can learn the easy steps to take back your country. Call us today. Defending your religious freedom, here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, joined again by Matt Barber with Christian Civil Rights Watch. Matt, mention your website and how can people support you? Yeah, I would encourage people to visit truecivilrights.org. There's a way to contribute uh, to what we're doing at Christian Civil Rights Watch, uh, taking, uh, going on the offense against uh, anti-Christian bigotry across the country. Well, I'm thankful for your service to Christians in America who are persecuted. David Delighton and Sandra Merritt are two of those Christians and they are persecuted now by uh, a federal judge, William Oreck, who decided to instruct a jury that they don't have First Amendment rights 
when they're engaging in journalism as, as undercover uh, you know, expose, but they, they didn't trespass because they bought a ticket to the conferences where they attended. Mm -hmm. um, they, they didn't engage in illegal uh, recording because it was in a public place and the other people were engaged in criminal activity. The judge ignored all that. But more importantly, he said, the First Amendment is not a legal defense to their actions. Yeah, and, and one of the counts was for RICO, the racketeering, which was a, a, a federal law put in place to go after mobsters, uh, uh, gangsters, the so mafia. The pro-lifers are now <laughs> like the godfather? Yeah, what right. Is this? Well, well and, and, and the pro-abort activists and, and judicial system have, have abused RICO for, for, for decades, yeah. for years. And, and used it against pro-lifers, the Supreme Court has finally ruled that they can't do that anymore. Well, so the judge, again, in order to try to circumvent that, a case that is addressing the issue of journalism on its face, covered by the First Amendment, yep. uh, free speech, the, the, the exposing of this criminal activity, the disseminating of, of the videos and the proof of this criminal activity, and, and the sharing of their opinions, the speech associated with that, we have a right to a free press covered by the First Amendment. We have right to freedom of religious expression. We have the right to free speech. This judge, uh, it, it boggles the mind in order to circumvent that and try to horn, uh, uh, you know, uh, sh uh, shoehorn Rico into this and get around the Supreme Court's rulings that Rico cannot be applied to these pro-life activities just arbitrarily said this has nothing to do with the First Amendment, even though it does. So, so I want to be clear here that there, there are so many strong uh, uh, issues here for appeal. I believe that this judge will be smacked down. Now, of course, we're talking about the Ninth Circuit, which President Trump has vastly improved by putting originalists on but the court. But it's still 50-50. It's still, it's still a toss-up, and the yeah. Ninth Circuit has, has long, sh uh, you know, the most overturned. They, they don't call it the Ninth Circus Court of Appeals for no reason. So I don't know what the Ninth Circuit's going to end up doing, but uh, I, I believe ultimately, and Liberty Council, Sandra Merritt, David DeLayden are prepared to take this all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. This is a travesty of justice uh, by uh, Judge Oreck here. And in my, in my personal opinion, I believe it's sanctionable. I, 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 he has so abused his uh, judicial discretion here um, that, I, that I believe he should be sanctioned. But ultimately, I think at, in the end, this will be smacked down on appeal. So you talk with Matt Staver this morning. He's been on our show, a longtime friend. He had me on his TV show back in a decade ago. Um, you were his co-host, his assistant dean at Liberty uh, and he was prime counsel, Liberty Council was yeah. defending Sandra Merritt. What was her part of this story? Well, Sandra uh, is a grandmother. Uh, she is a, uh, a citizen journalist, activist, pro-life activist who knowing uh, that she was going into the lion's den here in, in various, at these Planned Parenthood and knowing how well-funded a, you know, a multi, really billion dollar organization getting half a billion in tech, taxpayer dollars every year, which in and of itself is a travesty, put it all on the line, went in to expose this, it, not just criminal, this genocide that we, that we see here. It, it's, it, it for is- For profit. <clears throat> for profit, the selling of baby body parts. You remember famously one of the Planned Parenthood directors joking, <clears throat> That they got this these good monies for all the money for all this different uh, these different body parts so she that she could finance her Lamborghini, you remember that? <laughs> I so, remember that. Yeah, it, it is just unbelievable. And of course, Planned Parenthood, they utilize their activists. And don't forget, there are criminal charges against Sandra Merritt, uh, David DeLayden, as well with an activist uh, 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 attorney general. Um, going after um, Planned Parenthood, I believe in New York, or no, that's in California as well, going after them uh, for criminality. They could literally go to prison for this and we have activists, again, abusing the judicial system and in this case, the criminal justice system to try to punish free speech, pr punish investigative journalism, but more than all of that, in order to come to the defense of Planned Parenthood, punish pro-lifers and try to send a shot over the bow uh, so that any future pro-lifers who might expose this kind of criminality on the part of Planned Parenthood would think twice. Why haven't the pro-aborts been tried with a crime? I mean, here they are caught on tape. The, the evidence is published all over the internet uh, that they are engaging in the private for-profit sale of aborted baby body parts, which violates federal law. Where's the FBI on this? Why hasn't Attorney General William Barr 
prosecuted some of these Planned Parenthood executives? Your answer your, is as good as mine. I, I don't know. And, and well, they should. And, and especially now under the Trump administration, they, they should, because here we have the difference being clear criminal activity, a demonstrable criminal activity on the part of Planned Parenthood, which is prosecutable. But when you keep in mind that in the, the, the local, the state jurisdictions and venues here associated with this, uh, these are liberal pro-abort activists that are going after, instead of going after the true criminals, going after the whistleblowers uh, who have exposed the criminality. So there is a whistleblower element to this. Can't uh, David and Sandra be treated as if they are exposing crimes? Do whistleblowers have protection in these cases or does it have to be an employee of the government to have that status? Yeah, um, well, in this case, because it is a private organization, a private entity, and it's not a government agency that we're talking about here, uh, whistleblower uh, statutes don't apply directly. However, clearly that's what we, we are doing here. Unlike the whistleblower with the impeachment fiasco, with third, fourth hand uh, knowledge, you know, hearsay, we, these are individuals with direct knowledge and proof of criminality, exposing that criminality. And, and I hope that the Trump administration will get involved in this and, the, and that the DOJ and, and Attorney General William Barr will go after Planned Parenthood. They have every reason and all of the evidence they need to do so. Let's take another short break. Uh, speaking of the Trump administration, the Trump administration has directed the United Nations that we will not participate in abortions overseas with your taxpayer dollars. Why this big change over the Obama administration and the return to the Mexico City policy after this. Dr. Chaps will be right back with more PIJN News. How can you discern the thoughts in your own mind from the thoughts that come to you from the Holy Spirit or from angels or from invisible demons? I'm Dr. Chaps, and you've seen us on this show talk about the gift of discerning of spirits. How can you discern the thoughts that come to you? How do you know to learn to hear the voice of God and discern that from the demonic voice which tempts us to sin? Well, this is an important skill and it will change your ministry. It'll change your life, which is why we've created a 17 part video Bible study on a four disc DVD set that we would like to send to you and your church and your family and your small group. This important Bible study series goes through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. How did Jesus discern the spirits? How did the Apostle Paul discern the spirits? What does the Old Testament say about demons and the Holy Spirit and angels? We're offering a discount today while supplies last. It used to be $99. Now it's just a suggested donation of $50. You get the entire four disc set and you learn how to discern the Holy Spirit, angels and demons, every mention in the Bible. Call us at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D or visit our website or write to the address on your screen. You can learn to discern the spirits. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign an important online petition. Today, I wanna to invite you to sign a critical petition to defend innocent babies and to end abortion in America. On this show, we like to pray and petition God, but we also need you to take action today by petitioning Congress to stop the taxpayer-funded child killing, especially by defunding Planned Parenthood, America's number one abortion provider. Why are your taxes paying to murder innocent children in the womb? Well, if Congress would simply define personhood as life beginning at conception, we can reverse Roe versus Wade. Please join me today by signing this important petition to Congress. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign your petition today. Sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, joined again by Matt Barber with Christian Civil Rights Watch, his website, truecivilrights.org. Matt, uh, there is good news coming out of Washington, even out of New York and the United Nations, that the Trump administration and their representatives are going to international conferences, the latest in Nairobi, Kenya, right. and telling the world 
that America is no longer going to pay for abortions with our taxpayer dollars through the United Nations. This is a return to what, what President Obama had gotten rid of, but his predecessor, George W. Bush, had enforced the so-called Mexico City policy right. To, and the Trump administration is now pro-life around the world. Well, that's right, and, and the Mexico City policy, of course, now being reinstated, and I love that President Trump is effectively undoing everything that President Obama did, uh, unless he has, you know, uh, like on DACA, activist judges coming in and saying, you can't issue an executive order to remove an executive order, which is absurd on its face. But in this case, Trump reinstates, reaffirms, effectively the international version of the Hyde Amendment, right, the Hyde Amendment, which says that taxpayer dollars cannot be used to, to fund abortion <clears throat> internationally. So countries that are, are funneling our tax taxpayer uh, money into a, a pro-abortion policies and or organizations, we've said, no, we're gonna, we're gonna withhold those tax dollars. And, and really, it, it, it's unconscionable to think that our, you, my pro-lifers, that our taxpayer dollars would be used uh, so that we become indirectly complicit with uh, ab abortion homicide, and that's exactly what it is. Well, pre the Trump administration has said, uh, certainly uh, domestically and internationally, we're, we're having none of it. And is there a conflict, I think, between the federal and some states, like Texas, who don't wanna receive Medicaid dollars that would fund abortion, and, and the Trump administration has given them an out also. Uh, within the domestic policy, he's directed the Department of Health and Human Services to give doctors, for example, a conscience protection and the right to opt out of being forced. If you're in a Catholic hospital, you happen to be a Christian doctor or nurse, mm -hmm. should you be forced to do an abortion or a judge recently struck that down? Yeah, in lies, in lies the battle, the, the, the pro-abort left. Uh, they, uh, you know, sin uh, loves darkness and sin also wants others to be complicit in sin. And so the left wants to compel, imagine this, to compel a nurse, for instance, at a Catholic hospital, a, 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 with deeply, uh, sincerely held religious beliefs that uh, relative to the sanctity of life, wants to be, wants to force her, compel her, to help dismember a live child through abortion homicide. Uh, the Trump administration has put uh, protections in place for liberty of conscience. The Trump administration is also protecting our liberty of conscience in that it is disallowing now, um, uh, again, as per the Hyde Amendment, disallowing our taxpayer do dollars to be funneled toward organizations, Title 10, for instance, with Planned Parenthood now be taken out because it, they provide abortion services. That's the lion's share of their income is through abortion. They are an abortion organization with some window dressing on some of the other services that they provide. So that's all good news. You mentioned the, the Medi Medicare, Medicaid, the, the money coming in, uh, and and that has been heavily litigated, but we have had success after success in the courts as well, saying that states can disallow funding for organizations and for insurance policies and so forth that pay for abortion. Because a lot of times that federal money is a pass through, it passes through the state, but there's always strings attached. Mm -hmm. uh, especially under the Obama administration, their strings were, we'll give you this money to care for women on the condition that you also help kill their children That's right. with taxpayer dollars. Texas said no, we're, yeah. we're not gonna do that. We're, uh, and then they passed other, so what's the status of case law now and, and do you have any information on the latest lawsuits for some of these um, abortion clinic access laws where they have to, use, they have, to have certain- The bubble zone laws, is that what you're talking about? Well, either free speech zones around them for protesters, zones, or bubble zones. Um, where they have to have hospital admitting privileges for some of the doctors, which has ended up closing countless clinics in places yeah, like Yeah, multiple cases ongoing, uh, it, and, and the uh, Planned Parenthood and the pro-aborts are, of course, venue shopping. They wanna get these cases in the most liberal courts that they possibly can. There are conflicting de uh, decisions on that. Common sense. Uh, what is in the best interest of the patient? What about full disclosure? Obviously, women uh, uh, women die in abortion clinics. Babies always die in abortion clinics, but but oftentimes women bleed out. They die there. Uh, th these doctors, these abortionists, need to have uh, 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 ad ad admission 
uh, privileges need to be licensed and, and, and be admitted to, to hospitals, but they want to make, uh, create, remove any potential hurdle to the slaughter of unborn babies. So ultimately that is working its way up through the courts. There are conflicting decisions, which will help, I believe, help it get all the way to the Supreme Court and hopefully uh, the right decision will come out on that. Do you think the Supreme Court will ultimately help people like David Delighton and Sandra Merritt or uh, hospital admitting privileges cases or <clears throat> states like Texas or the Trump administration who doesn't wanna fund abortions overseas. Do we really have a five to four court for pro-life cases? It's a toss up, you know, uh, Chief Justice Roberts has effectively become the swing vote. Uh, that he's kind of replaced Kennedy in that regard. I'm, I'm still confident that on, on the issue of life and on some of these issues of religious liberty and freedom of speech and so forth, Judge Roberts is gonna come down uh, on, on the right side of history and the Constitution. But this is just a reminder that, that elections have consequences, as, yeah. as Obama famously said, and, and why we need a, a commander in chief in 20 and 20, who when, you know, there are two uh, justices who are, are probably on their way out relatively soon, Justice Ginsburg, Justice Breyer. And so we need a president who is going to replace them with uh, a constitutionalist, uh, originalist judges. I think you're right. We have just a, about 30 seconds left. Maybe we could offer a word of prayer. Absolutely. Father in heaven, we do ask your blessing on every court in America that is deciding these important cases. Father, we pray that you would overturn the corrupt American judges with your godly justice. And Father, we pray that as these cases bubble up to appeals courts, to the Supreme Court, that your word and your standard would prevail in the minds of these judges. Father, we even ask for a few surprise victories. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, this is Matt Barber, I'm Dr. Chaps. Our website is PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Please donate when you visit or call us if you need prayer, 866-Obey-God. We'll see you next time. I'm Dr. Chaps, I have two exciting announcements. For those of you who found us maybe one day a week, did you know we're on five days a week with in-depth analysis and Christian news reporting and we pray the news. Where else are you gonna see that? Here's the exciting news. We're now on Apple TV. We're on five days a week on this exciting new streaming platform, Apple TV. Maybe you've already found us on Roku or Amazon Fire, but Apple TV, look for PIJN News in the spirituality category. And here's my other breaking news. Did you know we're also on podcast? Well, what's a podcast? Well, you can listen to us five days a week on audio, maybe when you're working out at the gym or driving in your car. You can watch the video on your smartphone. Visit iTunes and look for PIJN News. We're also on 10 on-demand platforms. Visit PrayInJesusName.org to find them all. And did I mention it's absolutely free? Other people charge a fee, but ours is free. Subscribe today to PIJN News. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.